In this recording, we're going to assess the view that sociology can be value-free and should be value-free. The arguments and evidence surrounding value freedom in sociology create an ongoing debate between different sociologists. Positivists like Comte and Durkheim believe that sociology should be carried out in a scientific way with measurable quantitative variables that do not include any personal bias or subjective opinions. Sociology is a purely objective science and any other approach to it should be ignored. The question for positivists is less about whether it should be value-free, but that the question of whether it is value-free is of course yes, otherwise it's not scientific and it would therefore not be true sociology and it would not produce real truths to establish clear cause and effect relationships. The debate of whether sociology is value-free relates very closely to, the, closely to the argument of whether sociology is a science or not. Those who believe it's not a science, like Kuhn and the feminist, will disagree with the positive view over value freedom. Weber believed that complete value freedom is not 100% possible, as at some point the researcher's bias will creep in. Sociologists should do their best to remain objective as they can, and believe that value freedom is possible at the start of the research process when the choice of topic is being made. For example, when Weber studied the Protestant ethnic, he did not allow his personal bias to influence his choice of topic, but when he researched the Calvinist, he emphasised with them to understand the link between their religion and work ethic. However, you could argue that he took a non-objective position throughout his study because bias is inevitable and in fact using personal opinions and empathetic approaches in his research was a key part of his role as an interactionist or social action theory because he was playing the role of the other. Other sociologists have argued that sociolo sociology can't and shouldn't be value free, such as Madrail, who believes that sociology cannot and shouldn't be value free, is a key part to the research process and is near impossible anyway. He believes that it's, um, it's difficult for scientists to remain objective or value free, but even more so for social scientists because they are part of the topic that they study. For example, they are part of society, so research is bound to be value, value laden. And Goldner, who is a committed sociologist, believes that the sociologist has a moral duty to share their opinions and views to the reader at each stage of the research process because values will creep in. For example, at the choosing of a topic, a researcher won't choose a topic they don't care for. For example, feminists will investigate the role of men and women in patriarchal society. Also, the method of research plays a key role in the level of detachment of sociology a sociologist can keep. Positivists, positivists would argue that official statistics are the least value laden and positivist research prevents researcher bias. However, interactionists would prefer methods like participant observation and unstructured interviews because they contain high levels of attachment and value-laden elements. For example, those who do participant observation run the risk of don't going native, changing their route altogether, or stopping the research completely if their personal opinion is changed during the process. And those who conduct interviews may also get too attached. For example, Oakley admitted that she couldn't remain detached and objective when interviewing women in a maternity ward. At the final stage of the process, the way in which the data is analysed will be value laden. The three stages of a process highlight how remaining value free is not only a difficult thing to do, but sometimes it's also not necessary or desirable. Some sociologists believe that value-free sociology is not desirable and the researcher should explicitly state at each stage whose side they are on so that the reader is fully aware of the position of the sociologists. The committed sociologists admit explicitly to their biases but say that this is a good thing as it strengthens their arguments and shows that they are carrying out the sociological research for a purpose in order to help people. They are committed to expressing their biased view 
through evidence in the form of research. So conflict structural approaches of Marxism and feminism are both co um, committed sociologists. Marxists admit their values are the backbone of their research and theories, that capitalism is bad for society and the only way forward is through a revolution. This ideological bias sees the direction of their research and shows that they are committed to proving their theory is correct and they aim to get as many people on their side as they can. Also, feminists stress patriarchy in all areas of research such as religion, education and the family and they again use their bias to back up their argument that women face severe inequality. However, feminist views are strictly are not strictly correct because they are too simplistic or deterministic so respect from the reader and other sociologists may be lost. Postmodernists would argue that sociology can't be value free because the idea of an objective truth does not exist because society is based on meta narratives so if there is no objective view then all arguments should be considered as no view is important, more important, they should all be viewed equally. Values are inevitable and a key and a key to fair sociology is where all views are acknowledged. So in conclusion, the debate over value freedom is very complex, is a very complex matter and it is and it has different angles providing strong arguments. Perhaps it depends on the area of sociology that's studied, such as religion, education or crime and deviance.